How many of you remember a simpler time? You're on the school computers, the teacher walks away or is just not paid enough to care, and instead of doing schoolwork, you open up something like Miniclip, cool maths games, addicting games, armor games, or countless other flash game websites, and you open up your favorite flash game. For me, it was usually something like Boxhead or Bloons Tower Defense, and you just sit there playing that for the entire class. Now, Flash back then was used for more than just games and neat animations. A lot of the ad industry was built entirely on Flash, and then video players like YouTube were all Flash as well. So getting rid of Flash took a very long time. But as we all know, it did eventually happen. Over time, these use cases are replaced with things like HTML5, powerful JavaScript frameworks to obfuscate out the complexity of the web browser, and of course, WebAssembly for fast and lightweight web-based game engines, among various other things people use it for. And outside of nostalgia, which is very powerful and is basically the topic of today's video, everything that people wanted from Flash can now be done in these various different ways, albeit with very different ways of achieving it. But Adobe wasn't giving up straight away. They actually tried to make Flash Player a standard in the mobile space. Now, as we can see from the state of mobiles, that didn't exactly happen. So alongside the free-falling usage on the web, eventually Adobe killed it off in 2020. But that doesn't mean that Flash completely went away. Now you can find plenty of Reddit posts of people getting the last supported version of Flash Player running on modern systems, and that's good for them. But we're not a proprietary channel here, we mainly focus on open source. And even though Flash Player itself was never open sourced, has that ever stopped the FOSS world? Give them enough time, and you're gonna see something that actually does the job. So today I would like to highlight a couple of projects that tried to re-implement the Flash Player. The first of which is called LightSpark. Now keep in mind, there are two projects with the name LightSpark. I don't know why, because the Flash Player has been around way, way longer. But there is also this like crypto lightning payment thing, whatever. This is not the one we're looking at. This is the one we care about. This aims to be a FOSS re-implementation of the Flash Player, and it's by no means a new project. The website says 2011, but the repo says something different. It actually started in 2008. There was initially some excitement around getting this done because even though Flash Player at the time was still popular, it was starting to fall out of its main spike of popularity, but it was still absolutely massive. People back then wanted the idea of a open version of Flash Player that wasn't beholden to Adobe. But you can see it very quickly fell off and for a while nothing happened. And since then it's been a slow but relatively consistent amount of work with a little spike here after Adobe finally killed off Flash Player. But really not that much. Now this project is primarily written in C++, but it does make use of some C as well, about 15%, but primarily a C++ code base. Now originally, this was licensed under the GPL v3. About 14 years ago though, it did get relicensed into LGPL v3. I'm unclear on the reasoning why, but that's what it's currently using. Now, they still consider LightSpark to be an alpha, and as of their latest version, 0.8.7, released in May of 2023, they say they support about 83% of the Flash APIs. Now, that's all well and good to say as a number, but what does that realistically mean in terms of support? Now, it's really hard to say as a general standard. They do have a list of known tested games and known working games, and in some cases, games they know that definitely don't work or have gotten worse over time. But you're really going to be on your own. It's a matter of downloading the application, downloading the SWF, trying it out, and just seeing what works. And from my limited testing and the research that I've done, it seems like it's in a pretty good state in most cases. But that can't be said for everything without testing everything. It's the same problem that emulators have and 
pretty much any other re-implementation project has. Whilst the current state is really impressive, it's still very far from perfect. And the biggest problem with LightSpark is this contribution graph. It is the fact that there's very few people that work on it and the work they do is very slow over a very long amount of time. That's totally understandable. Nobody's making money here. This is entirely a volunteer project. But this lack of development, I don't think is due to a lack of interest in flash preservation. I think a big part of it is likely due to another project gaining quite a bit more attention. That being another flash re-implementation called Ruffle. And this here is their website. Ruffle, an open source Flash Player emulator. Now, if you look at their domain, you might notice what language this is written in. Let's go over to the GitHub in case it wasn't as obvious. A Flash Player emulator written in Rust. And Rust right here. Now, obviously, a lot of it is action script. That's all of the magical Flash stuff, but this is a Rust project. Now, unlike LightSpark, Ruffle uses a lot more of a permissive license, in this case being a combination of MIT and Apache V2. So basically, you can do whatever you want with it. Now, I know a lot of people, they like the copyleft licenses and they don't really like the permissive stuff, but from the perspective of wanting people to be able to do whatever they want with it, this makes a lot more sense as a choice. But crucially, Ruffle did something that LightSpark never did. They provided a way for users to give them money. Ruffle has an open collective, and they actually do fairly well on here, having over their entire time, 110,000 US dollars raised. Right now they have, go away. Right now they have a balance of 61,000. And it is absolutely no wonder they're doing so well. If we look at the organizations that are given the money, we have Newgrounds, Cool Maths Games, for some reason, the New York Times, we have Armor Games, we have Congregate, we have Neopets. When was the last time you heard about Neopets? I certainly don't know outside of this video. And we can see the full list of contributors in the list right here. And they have a lot of people that are giving them a lot of money and give them money over time as well. And they don't just sit on this money and just use it for web hosting and nothing else. They actually pay to have contributions done. This is a FOSS project with a paid developer. Yet they do exist. It's fairly rare, but this is one of them. Now, in terms of Flash Player re-implementations, this is a fairly new project, only starting in 2017. But I wouldn't really call this starting in 2017. Yes, it was created. And yes, there was the singular developer, Mike Welsh, who started the project. But look, basically nothing's being done. This was clearly a hobby project. Over this two-year period, nine commits were made. It wasn't until right here where things started to change. Now, importantly, who is Mike Welsh? And why did this project pop off? Now, Mike Welsh has been involved in the Flash space for a very long time, working at Newgrounds until 2012. Now, at the time, he made another project called Swivel. That project didn't really end up going anywhere, but everybody saw the writing on the walls. He knew it, the CEO of Armour Games knew it, everybody knew that Flash was going away it just wasn't entirely clear when it was going to happen. Now, when Ruffle was started, it actually had a different name. Back then, it was called Fluster. Now, it should be very obvious what happened right here. Flash Player was just about to die, and a bunch of websites realized they needed a solution, and Newgrounds started sponsoring the project. But not just Newgrounds, we also had Archive.org announced they were going to start using Ruffle right here. So if you go to Archive.org and go to their Flash game archive, it's actually going to be running Ruffle in the background. And it's not just Archive.org and Newgrounds. All of these other Flash sites that are still running Flash games today all started backing Ruffle. And whilst not all of them could afford to do so monetarily, basically all of them started using it. But along with the funding, a couple other major devs joined the project. 
The first being K Meist Hacks, and the second being Dinnerbone. Now, at this point, Dinnerbone wasn't making that many commits. But if we go back to the main Ruffle page and look at the top contributors, he is now number two. And yes, just in case you weren't sure, this Dinnerbone is that Dinnerbone. Nathan Adams, Dinnerbone from Mojang. Right now in 2024, the project isn't at its peak contributions. That was at this point in 2023. There was a lot of work being done here and it improved very, very quickly. But even though it's not at its peak, it is still seeing a lot of work being done. There was a commit an hour ago and basically every single day, there is at least a couple of commits. Some days, there is a lot of commits and this project is very very actively being worked on. So it is absolutely no wonder then when they did their 2023 year in review, ActionScript 3 language support went from 60% to 75%. ActionScript 3 API has gone up from 60 to 68% and it was only 25% at the start of the year. We've merged 852 pull requests from 43 people and three bots, and we've closed 1,288 issues. And some of them weren't even duplicates of anything. And they now have a lot of things working. Seven out of 10 of Flash's filter effects, which isn't everything, but those are the ones that are primarily being used. They even have networking working. So network games actually function in this solution, which is wild. There are certainly other Flash Player re-implementations out there, but these two I've mentioned are by far the biggest ones, and I think the Ruffle might actually be the first that finishes. This is the problem that most of them have, and this is a problem with a lot of things, really. It gets most of the way there, but that last, you know, 10-15% just isn't happening. It is a lot more challenging than the rest, and a lot of projects just end up dying because of it. This project is funding from organizations that have a vested interest in getting it done. This I see as viable now. Now, if you want to try it out for yourself and you don't want to install anything, they do actually have a web-based demo. All you need to do is just drag in the SWF file and it just works. For example, here is Bloons Tower Defense 2. Very, very different from the modern mobile Bloons Tower Defense, but it's still Bloons Tower Defense, and it still works exactly like you'd expect. Now, there is one more project I want to mention. This one is not a re-implementation, but I still feel like it's worth at least bringing up, that being Flashpoint Archive. This is two things. Firstly, a giant archive of legacy Flash content. So if you want to go find something like Boxhead, it's probably going to be on here. Very many different versions of Boxhead. And there is 160,000 games on here, so you're probably going to find something. Now, the other thing that Flashpoint is, is a basically open source environment that retains functionality of the old proprietary Flash Player plugin. So they have tooling like the Flashpoint Launcher, an Electron-based launcher, Flashpoint Proxy, Flashpoint Secure Player, Flashpoint Component Tools, all of these little things just to make the Flash player in these Flash environments actually work properly on modern systems without a bunch of extra overhead to get them working. All of this is licensed under the MIT license, with the obvious exception of the Flash player stuff, which is proprietary. Now, the reason why I bring this one up last is obviously it is not a re-implementation, but secondly, because it isn't, and uh, Flash never particularly worked that well on Linux or even macOS, it is going to be a little bit rough, and the support is going to be limited on those operating systems. If you actually want to play Flash stuff on Linux, your best option, like what most of the websites are using, is Ruffle. So whilst there have been other projects long in the past, like GNU Ganache from 2011, long dead project, nowadays the state of Flash is actually pretty good. And if you see any old Flash content on the web, it is 
almost certainly running on Ruffle. So if you want to go support the project, I'll leave all the links in the description down below. Get involved, all that fun stuff. Go ahead and do so. It sounds like a bit of fun. Or maybe, you know what, just go play some Flash games and relive your childhood. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What was your favorite Flash game? Was Flash outside of your generation? Were you already an adult by the time that Flash came around? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, sleep, bear, pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And I did not realize there were so many versions of Boxhead.